my advisor was an advocate for me to apply to all the different summer programs and like and also when I was applying for grad school and then my um, leadership professor like there was a lot of people who help along the way and it's like not only taking advantage of those resources but like passing that on I thought of life as very straightforward I'm like okay you go to school you go to more school and you go more school until you get this specific degree and then you can do anything. And I think that's kind of how I view the PhD is that you can do anything with it because that's what it seems like people are doing. And I wanted to understand that. And I also felt like I wasn't the only one who wanted to understand that. So a big part of doing the podcast was that I wanted to share that and also learn for myself so I could be like, mm, take note. Okay, I got to <laughs> I gotta do this. So that was like the biggest inspiration. Turn this up, turn this up. Your professional development is one of the keys to your career success. When you combine your desire to grow with actionable steps, your journey to success becomes an incredible reality. Hi, I'm Paul Ferrandi, aka Incredible Paul, and welcome to Incredible Paul Leadership, where we learn how to become the most incredible versions of ourselves by learning from each other. And today is actually a collaboration between Incredible Paul Leadership and the Nala STEM podcast. So I have the host of the Nala STEM podcast here. Today I have the honor of having Amani Porter on the show. She is going into her second year at Genetics PhD program at Stanford School of Medicine, and she is a proud Hampton University alum, degree in not only biochemistry, but leadership studies as well. It is amazing to have you on the show, Amani. I want you to introduce yourself, how you would do it. Hi, Paul. Um, my intro, I'm Imani Porter. Uh, you already said I'm going into my second year as a genetics PhD student at Stanford. Um, I got into podcasting recently, but I've been I've been um, involved in producing and at least audio recording from radio when I was at Hampton. And so awesome. part of that got me interested in like expanding in terms of what I could do. And plus this was something that I wanted to do, or at least have more influence in terms of, I guess, sharing my experience and then learning from other people's experience. That was my main reason for getting into this. So <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah. So talk to me more about that. You said you got to do some stuff on the radio experience while you're at Hampton. Is that something you came into Hampton seeking to do or kind of stumbled upon? I actually got interested in a kind of roundabout way. I, um, I'm an avid cartoon watcher and I get, in, I got interested in a lot of people, like a lot of voice actors and I like listening to their voice. And I would like, every time I heard something, I'm like, Ooh, that's something like I would hear people, and be like, I can identify them. That was like my favorite thing. And so I had a friend at Hampton and he did voice acting and he was like, Oh, I talked to the head at the radio station on campus and he's been helping me get all these different jobs. And I was like, introduce wow. me to him so i i yeah. got introduced to uh mr lang that whov he's the um, studio manager and awesome. so that's how i got introduced to the studio and then they were like oh if you want to be an announcer for the news uh broadcast you can so i was like yeah wow. yeah i do that so, <laughs> so then i was an announcer it was my freshman year like second semester freshman year but then COVID happened so then it was oh. like a year and a half, I wasn't able to do it. But then my junior yeah. and senior year, I did it, which was really fun. So <laughs> that that is phenomenal. You just jumped right in and just started doing it for cartoons. <laughs> so any specific cartoons? Like, I'm wondering if there's any like people on the show watch. So my favorites, at least when I was younger, I used to watch like the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Yeah, I used to watch Cartoon like, Network. The, yeah. The, yeah, I was a Cartoon Network kid. I watch all the Justice League shows, and then oh. I I stood up. I I stayed up when I wasn't supposed to, and I watched Adult Swim too. <laughs> when I was watching those shows, so I'm I like, think we I, all did. Yeah, so I was watching. I was watching anything that was on. <laughs> so I like Futurama. Yeah. Like there was just there's a lot. <laughs> That, that's really cool. Yeah, our, a lot of Cartoon Network. I think a lot of us, yeah, stayed past and watched a lot of the Adult Swim stuff they weren't necessarily supposed to watch. Might explain some of the issues I had growing up, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I'm really excited to have you on the show just to, to talk about what you're doing just in 
in graduate school and also what you're doing with this podcast as well. I know we've, we talked a little bit about it. If you want to share kind of your journey into even starting this podcast and even with Nala as a whole. Yeah. So at least with the inspiration with the podcast, I had an idea like two years ago because I knew that I wanted to just learn more about people who are who have gone into science, but they took non-traditional paths. And like whether they become entrepreneurs or whether they do like they have all these different positions. I'm like, how did you even get here? Like, and I'm trying to (laughs) figure out, I'm like, what is open to me? And part of me was like, there's all these different paths that you could take, but I don't know how to get there. And so when I ask people or like when I've gone to conferences and they have like speakers or just people I talk to at the conference and they're like, oh, I got into the, in, I got into, uh, they started out somewhere else. Like there's been people mm-hmm. who start out in the arts and then they go and have some, like they get a job and they're like, huh, I guess I could do this. And then they end up getting, <laughs> oh, I got my PhD. And then I ended up doing this and this and that. I'm like, wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, but this doesn't <laughs> seem that straightforward. And I wanted to just learn from other people because I think at least for me, I thought of life as very straightforward. I'm like, okay, you go to school, you go to more school, <laughs> and you go more school until you get this specific degree, and then you can do anything. And I think that's kind of how I view the PhD is that you can do anything with it because that's what it seems like people are doing. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to understand that. And I also felt like I wasn't the only one who wanted to understand that. So a big part of doing the podcast was that I wanted to share that and also learn for myself. So I could be like, mm, take note. Okay, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta do this. <laughs> so that was like the biggest inspiration. And then getting involved with Nala, I've been, at least while I was, um, I think it was my f- finishing up in undergrad, my mom had told mm-hmm. me she had gone to the LM, wait, LMS RCE conference. <laughs> and she had a lot seen, of letters. <laughs> yeah. And she, <laughs> and she, I think she either met you or she saw you guys speak mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. conference. And she was like, Oh, you should check them out. And blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay. So I, I usually, I try to take my mother's advice. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. <laughs> because I mean, she's, She's one of the inspirations for me to like try to see what is out there because she had a non-traditional path. So I was like, I, I take note of like people that I'm like, okay, this is this is probably important to do. So I don't know, I've gotten in the habit of that. But That's she awesome. she told me about Nala, and so I was like, okay, let me check it out. And I checked out the website, and then it was like, be a part of us. And I was like, oh, I'm just put my email in here. So. <laughs> And then you messaged me on LinkedIn and I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know it was going to be like that. So, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and then um, you had told me about more about the organization and then getting involved. And that's how I got involved in the outreach committee because I wanted to be more, I wanted to be more involved in mentorship and just kind of collecting people in terms of like creating resources. So I like doing that kind of stuff. I learned yeah. that's the thing I find fun. I, I go to conferences and I, I think I do the epitome of, of networking. I just talk. I talk <laughs> a lot. So. <laughs> talk is fun. Yeah. So that was kind of the origins. And you had mentioned the like starting another podcast for Nala. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. same mission, same opportunity. And now I didn't have to do it on my own. So it felt perfect <laughs> yeah no it, it was perfect because i remember that you you signed up and i remember like uh, your mom was there that she was talking to me about nala stem and then mentioned you and i was like well i think she mentioned something that you weren't an l sample alum i was like we're open to um, everyone that's uh, really resonating with our vision and then you to unite support and build community among all historically school peoples in stem and yeah. then from there she's like oh i can let you know about it and then when I saw your registration come through, I was like, I got I got to reach out to you and just figure out <laughs> how you can stay connected. And then I remember you started to talk more about podcasts. I was like, mm-hmm. this is an idea I've been wanting to do for a while. I already have a podcast and I, I want to help produce other podcasts. So I don't know if I can actually host it and mm-hmm. be on it all the time. And so that was just, it was a perfect match. 
Yeah, it was the serendipity at work. So <laughs> serendipity for sure. No, oh, it was really good. So I'm I'm curious because I know just kind of jumping back a little bit because you study mm -hmm. biochemistry and leadership studies. Is that something like were you always interested in biochemistry like through high school and growing up, or like talk me through like how you chose those majors? So what I, I was interested in biology for a while. And that was originally, and I feel like a lot of people go through this this transition sometimes, uh, but I wanted to be a doctor, like a medical doctor. And then I think it was around in middle school because my parents would take me <laughs> to different like panels and different workshops and be like, oh, mm -hmm. this is what you do when you're a doctor, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and so there was a panel it was called, So You Want to Be a Doctor. And they had like a pediatrician, <laughs> they had a dermatologist, like they just had different physicians up there and they were talking about their experience of becoming a, a practicing doctor. And they were talking about like, oh, you have to study and do this and you have to take the MCAT, then you have to do residency and then you go to, I'm like sitting there like, <laughs> so are you a doc? Like it felt like, are you a doctor at that point? Like, what do you, when do you get to the point <laughs> where it's, it's this and this is what you do but it felt like it was constant for like eight ten years and i was like even after undergrad i was like i don't and then they were wow. they were talking about like the stress and i was like i don't know this so i don't want to be a doctor i don't this is not for me okay, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> in high school i was like i'm still interested in science but i don't know I don't know. And it's wild because my mother, mind you, has a PhD. She's a polymer chemistry. So the thing is, I, I had mm -hmm. somebody in my house who did it and I knew she had a PhD, but I don't really think I knew what that was or like I knew I didn't know what it meant. And so in high school, she got me involved in this program called AXO. It's a long name or it's a long acronym. It stands for Afro Academic Cultural Technological Scientific Olympics. <laughs> and wow. it's like the, yeah. And it's like a branch within the NAACP where they okay. have like high school students showcase their knowledge and talents in the arts and sciences. And so I was in the science part and our chapter, I was in DuPage County. So that was our chapter. And we did, okay. we partnered with Argonne National Lab. And wow. so I met my mentor and um, that was kind of where I got to be like, oh, so this is what scientists do. Because at that point, I'm just like, you just mix stuff together and things change, colors or blow up. Like that's, that's science. <laughs> I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't really know what it entailed to like do a project and like apply the scientific theory. Like I know they have in, in science class where they're like, oh, hypothesis and then methods. And then, and I, it was just like, <laughs> okay, and, <laughs> but like now that I'm like coming up with ideas, it felt like it came it, it made more sense to me and i was like i can do this so that was kind of what got me into um i guess evolve and though it was i was just in like interested in biology at the time i knew when i was going to undergrad a lot of biology was oversaturated with pre-med students <laughs> and i was like i don't <laughs> want to do that and so biochem okay. was a little it was still where I wanted to be, but it was slightly off to the side from where okay. it was just less saturated with pre-med students. <laughs> that was mostly it. And then the leadership Fair studies, enough. it came from, uh, I think I wanted to be, everybody's like, you got to be a leader and you got to learn. And I was like, okay. And my, in Hampton had, um, they, they sent a letter to students. They were saying, like, we have the William R. Harvey Leadership Institute. And so I was like, I should sign up for this. They're saying I should be a leader. So I <laughs> I signed up. And I remember, like, the the director, his name is Dr. Taylor. He He's interesting. I, I It's always funny because I can never tell <laughs> what he's thinking. Yeah, yeah, I can never tell what he's thinking. And I'll think that I'm like, things will go bad. And then he'll, like, when he's talking about you to other people he was like, oh yeah she's a great student and i'm like i didn't know he thought oh. that because <laughs> he was like stonewall <laughs> he'll stonewall and just look at you and then wow. like, and I, we had to like interview to get into the institute so when i interviewed i thought it was yeah. bad because he was like i <laughs> i think i came in and i sat down he's like i never told you to sit down i said 
Whoa. <laughs> <I'm down. laughs> so I was freaked out at the start. Wow. I like, I in and da, 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 and I was, <laughs> so, but I ended up getting uh, in and it was, hmm. I learned a lot about just the different types of leaders there were. Cause I think everybody thinks that there's one type of way to be as a leader and it's, it goes beyond just being like, oh, I'm in charge of people. I tell people what to do. It's, it's not yeah. about that. It's more like connecting with people. And you can do that in many different ways. You can do yeah. that in being like a, a like peer leader. And you're just like, I corral people and I can recognize other people's skills. And we're just putting our best pieces together and making a whole yeah. unit. Or you can be more like service leadership and like there's different types of ways that you can lead that I didn't know about. And I feel like that program helped me to, I guess, better connect with my own leadership style and be able to like work with it and, and like just see like, OK, I can do this because I didn't think I could at first. And I was like, OK, I guess it's possible. So <laughs> <laughs> that was my learned. I know that was like a long winded answer. Oh no, it wasn't. No. <laughs> like, that, 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 was, that was perfect. Like I actually share a similar story with wanting to do pre-med and then fell in love with research is why I changed. So like mm -hmm. I studied chemical engineering, but that was like a backup, if you can believe that, for going wow. to med school. <laughs> <laughs> and then like on the leadership side, I mean it is a credible leadership and leadership like what you mentioned, it has so many, it looks different across the board. Mm -hmm. but I think the there's something foundational about leadership. And I like what John Maxwell says. He said, leadership is influence, nothing more, yeah. nothing less. Because people can have leadership titles and then mm -hmm. not really be good leaders at all because people are trying to undercut or like only do exactly what they say and try to figure <laughs> out how they can get around it. And yeah. there's other people, yeah. And then there's other people who don't have a title at all. And then when they say something, everyone stops and looks at them because they they have they have have the, the consistent success, or they can tell that they really care about the people or the situation. So, and those are some key things. A lot of the stuff is the the soft skills I like to call leadership skills or life skills that everyone needs to have to be an effective leader. Are you wondering what's next? Has everything you tried failed? Or maybe you just feel stuck? Then coaching might be right for you. The coaching relationship is a relationship totally centered on you. If you're tired of running on the hamster wheel of life and want to start to see results, reach out to Incredipal for help. So what are you waiting for? Go to incredipal.org slash coaching I N C R E D I P A U L dot org slash coaching or at I am incredible on all my socials. Or you can click the link in the bio for your free coaching session. I want to make sure you become the most incredible version of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So I know we talked a little bit about now, we talked about your your background. Kind of talk to me about your transition from undergrad into to grad school, because it sounds like when you you got into undergrad, you were set on doing med school, med school. and then and then you kind of you kind of transitioned into wanting to do a, a PhD because your mom had a PhD. Was that an easy transition, or how did you choose what schools you're going to go to, like? So oh. I actually knew I wanted to do research back in high school because that's when I started doing research. And so oh, awesome. I, that was through AXO. I was doing research at Oregon. So I did, by the time I was applying to colleges, I was like, I was just looking for schools that people were like, oh, they're good. they have good research programs. I said, okay, they're added to awesome. the list. And because it was common app, I was just adding stuff. But then I forgot okay. about the application fees. I'm like, all right, let's cut this down. So, like, <laughs> so I um, I applied to a lot of schools still, but some of them had um, they had fee waivers, and so those were okay. the ones that I added on just because I could. And Hampton was one okay. of them. Um, oh wow! Yeah, but I applied to 
Actually, a lot of PWIs, I think it's because at the time I wasn't really, HBCUs weren't really on my radar. I was just kind of like, all oh, these good schools, da 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 da. And I was yeah. like, by the time I was, I had got like whatever acceptance letters, it was between two Ohio schools for some reason. It was right. Ohio State and Case Western Reserve. And so that wow. was, and then Hampton because they also accepted me. And then they had, they they were giving me a lot better deal than the other two schools, oh, nice. which is why I ended up at Hampton. And they said, so Hampton said that they had LSAM because I was aware of LSAM and I was asking schools, I'm like, do you have LSAM? Because I'm like, I know that I can do research through there and I know that there's different yeah. opportunities through there. So I wanted to make yeah. sure that they had it, but they didn't. Yeah. At least at the time, they said they had LSAM. So I was like, oh, okay, perfect. And then, yeah. like, I, I kept trying to get in contact with the, like, the director at uh, uh. Hampton. And this woman was busy. Like, she was, it was so, <laughs> literally, I sat outside of her office because they're like, I talked to her secretary. She's like, oh, she's in a meeting. She'll be back in, like, 20 minutes. I was like, okay. So I sat there. She was there. She was, I was waiting for, like, an hour and I was just like, is she? You waited for an hour? I did. Well, it was between classes. It was during my lunch. And I was just Still. like, okay, this is the only time. But literally, it was like one week. I went there like four times that week. And it was she was just always somewhere. And I was like, wow. I'm trying to get, <laughs> like, I was trying to get her. <laughs> and eventually, I did. And she was like, oh, yeah, I can connect you and blah, 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 blah. And so, but, and it was wild because she was, I didn't realize it at the time, but she was getting ready to transition out of her role. And so oh. I I was still trying to contact her and she was like slowly leaving. And I even cleaned out, helped clean out her office. Didn't know she was leaving. I thought I was just helping declutter. <laughs> she, oh my goodness. <laughs> and so when she left, I was like, but what about the, the and and she she had um Along the way, I had gotten connected with this other woman. Um, it, it, she was she was um, a part of or head of URISE, and URISE is similar to LSAM in that it helps to get undergraduate students connected with um, uh, with well under I mean the summer research opportunities that they undergraduates can do. And you can do research on campus and get paid. So it was like a whole scholarship. It was, it's actually kind of like Mark. It's pretty much Mark, but they call it something different. It's called U Rise or Rise at other schools. I think it's just a different what? grant. Do you know what U Rise stands for? It's like undergraduate uh, research. I should know this. I, <laughs> we no, always call it U Rise, so I just forget. <laughs> There's so many other acronyms in my head. I, <laughs> But, There's a lot of acronyms. Yeah, yeah, but it's undergraduate research, something, but it's like it's preparing you for grad school, essentially. That's what it's for, because it's, it's supposed to help increase the number of underrepresented minorities in academia and, and higher okay. education positions and stuff like that. So that was that's the mission of the. Yeah the whole scholarship program. So she told yeah. me about that. And that was what I became a part of like my junior and senior. I applied my sophomore year, or like the summer that right at the end. And then that oh, wow. incoming junior year, I was a URI scholar. And then they paid for the rest of school. Cause before I was paying for room and board. Oh, wow. And then after, even though I, <laughs> I had enough scholarship money to pay for the first year room and board. And then I was like, we'll figure the rest out later. <laughs> And then COVID happened, so there was no room and board. And then by the time I got back on campus, I was on URI. So I graduated <sighs> debt free, which was one of the That's best things. Awesome. It was great. So <laughs> that was I love URI for that. And I um and like through the chemistry department, they were like the biggest advocates for it. Cause my the chair of the department, she was she was kind of adopting some of the bio students as well. But like she was getting everybody connected with like, oh, you need this opportunity. And she would just email people and be like, sign up for this. I'm like, okay. And like it you would ask her to put in your recommend or letter of recommendation. She would get it in in like 15 minutes. I'm like, I just sent the message. Wow. I didn't even email her yet. So <laughs> she was on it. I'm like, I don't know if she wow. ever slept, but uh <laughs> doesn't sound like she did. Yeah. Wow. 
But um, so when? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, that that was it. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was gonna ask about like even like choosing Stanford. Like, what do you you going mm. into grad school? Like, how how did that happen? That was. I had applied to Stanford. I wouldn't have applied if I hadn't got, gotten in the um, summer research program in 2021. And that was COVID. And I, during COVID, I was like, please, I just want to leave home. So I applied to everywhere but <laughs> where I was. So <laughs> okay. I applied yeah. to somewhere in Georgia. I applied to somewhere in um somewhere in Virginia or yeah, I think it was Virginia and then Stanford SSRP. And so the only one that I got into was the Stanford one. And I was like, of all the ones, I mean, I'm not complaining. And so I'm like, Oh, I'm going to go to California. And da, 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 da. and then they said, yeah. the email, Oh, congratulations. We'll be doing this hundred percent virtual. I, said, I almost cried. Cause I was oh, like, I no. want to leave. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I emailed, I emailed the, the like the, head of the program i was like is there any chance that like at any point we could come to visit the campus she's like no and i was like oh okay <laughs> so no yeah because <laughs> i i guess i mean it was covid so they're like yeah we're not gonna risk it and of course they don't want to spend the money to fly everybody out just for like i guess a few days and then send us back i don't know but i was just hoping but no so we it was the it was the best of what a virtual like research opportunity could be like it was, I got a lot out of it. I learned a lot, but it, at the same time, I was still at home. And, or I mean, at the time I, I tried to switch it up. I visited my sister in Ohio for the summer. So I was in Ohio for the, okay. for my uh, internship, but okay. it was, it was a really good opportunity. And I felt like I got a good sense of what the school was about. Cause they had like different speakers come and they would talk about like, just the way that they talked about their science, I was like, oh my God. Like it was, it felt like a real story. Cause sometimes you'll hear people talking about science and it's just like facts, 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 da 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 da. And you're just like, mm -hmm. yeah. and you just get lost mm -hmm. real fast. But it was, oh, I wish I could remember the name of people, but I'm terrible with names. But there was one, <laughs> there was one professor and he was talking about, he was talking about um, his, it, actually, this isn't even him. I, this other person is the chair of the genetics department, but he was talking about his wearables and, and he pretty much wears like eight different watches. And it, so eight he has, different watch? No, what? he has one on the front, one on the back, and then he has the other side, and then he has like something around his waist. Like he has some monitor on him at all times. And so, wow. but that's what his research is. So he always knows what's going uh, on. He's like, I see my blood glucose go up and then I see my heart rate go down. And like, he's seeing everything. And uh, it's like wow. a different monitor for different things. Um, okay. And he was presenting something about um, like precision medicine. And I, that was one of the things okay. that I was really interested in. Um, and so I was like, oh my God, this is, this is the place to be. And they're like, one of the best genetics programs in the country. So I'm like, this is where I want to be. And um, I, that was why Stanford was on my radar. And of course, within these summer programs, they're always like, you should apply to our school. And I was like, okay, y'all know me. I might as well. <laughs> yeah. So I applied to Stanford and I applied to, I applied to like 10. No, I didn't make it to 10. I made it to eight schools. I got tired by eight. <laughs> so I applied wow. to eight schools and I didn't think I was going to get into Stanford. I actually got deferred. And then um, wow. I was set on Johns Hopkins, actually. But then, wow. then they I visited Stanford, and I was like, or it was it wasn't that I visited. It was like a week before my spring break. They told me that I got in, and they were like, "You can come next week to come to accepted students' day." And I was like, "Oh, okay." And I was visiting the my week sister. before the week they before. Told no. <laughs> But this is the crazy part. I was going to California anyway because my sister is in San Jose. And so I was like, oh, I what? can visit you for spring break. And literally at the end of my spring break was when the visiting students week. I was like, Nia, just drop me off at the. At the wow. Trip. That it is was, amazing. Yeah, that was that was wild. And it threw me off a lot. And I was just like, I was set going to, I was like, I'm gonna go to Johns Hopkins because they were one of the first people to say, oh, you're accepted and we'll give you this fellowship. And I was like, yeah. That, that's awesome. <laughs> and so once I got into Stanford, it was, 
I was like, oh, wow, plans have changed. <laughs> so, plans have changed. Literally the week before. I, yeah. I, I really like uh, it. It's, it's, it's funny. I'm a person of faith. I feel like God works everything out. But you yeah. were already like there. Yes. <laughs> and then you already had ch- plans to be there. And so you just stay a little bit longer. And then, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> no, I, I love that. I love getting to learn more about you and even what you talked about, the Knowledge STEM podcast, mm-hmm. like what you're trying to get out of it, learn about different people's kind of journey into into STEM. And even for your journey as well, because you talked about being in the pre-med space and then yeah. you thought about biology, we're like, no, super saturated, going <laughs> to biochemistry and add that with leadership studies. I feel like that's, and that's why I do a lot, a lot of stuff with leadership in STEM, because I feel like that's not something that's talked about a lot yeah. in STEM, because we talk about the technical stuff and like the research and all these things, which it is important, but when it comes down to it, we have to interact with people. And that's what leadership comes in, because yeah. no matter what you're doing, you always have to interact with people and having those leadership skills is critical. It is. Yeah. So, and I think it's great that you're able to expand in that space because I feel like people don't think of leadership within science, but there's so many leadership roles within science. Cause even if you go down the traditional path, if you become a PI, you're, that's your job. You're like yeah. pretty much managing all the people in your lab and trying to like make this, whatever mission in terms of what your research is, you're trying to make that happen but then you have to manage what other people's interests are and be like, okay, how do we get this all to come together and like make everybody gets what they want out of it. And that's like, that's the beauty of it, but that can also be very challenging. Oh yeah. It is. It's definitely challenging. Leadership is hard. It can be very hard. It's rewarding, but it's hard at the same time. Yeah. That's good. That well, cool. we're, a, we're about out of time, but I want to make sure, is there anything we haven't talked about either you or the Nala STEM podcast or just anything in general you want to share with the audience before we wrap things up? Um, in general, I the biggest takeaway that I've had, at least throughout this experience, is just the people that I've met and also just being an advocate as well because there was a lot of people who were advocates for me that's how well my mother was an advocate to get me at, in axo and then i the, my advisor was an advocate for me to apply to all the different summer programs and like and also when i was applying for grad school and then my um leadership professor like there was a lot of people who help along the way and it's like not only taking advantage of those resources but like passing that on like i was um uh, there was one man, he, he recently passed away, but it was Dr. Joel Oppenheim. He told me about the Leadership Alliance, which was this consortium of all these different schools, a lot of Ivy League schools, where they're also trying to increase the number of underrepresented minorities in STEM. And so they have come together and they're like, okay, we have these different summer programs. And then at the end of the summer, they all present at the Leadership Alliance conference. And um, the the mission with that has connected or like being a part of that organization. When I applied for my I had a second internship, it was at Harvard and they oh, were. Wow. Yeah, they were one of the other people in lands. And so be connected with all these people. And I don't know if I, I talked about Abrahams, but there's like that conference. That's where all yeah. the schools, and I didn't know, I'd been to Abrahams before, but I'd never heard of Leadership Alliance, but there's so many of those schools oh. there. And so when, after I had done lands, I went the next year and I saw all the people. I'm like, wait a second. I knew you were going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so it was wow. exciting. And it's just like, it also, I see how small of a world science is, mm-hmm. especially when you're a person of color. There's not a lot of people there because it will be, yeah, it, it will be very few people that you meet. And if you go to these spaces, you'll find a lot of the same faces. But yeah. don't you not take that for granted because those opportunities are just they're priceless. And I really I really encourage a lot of students, undergrad, grad to take advantage of like going to stuff like that and then reaching back to students in there. So that's all. <laughs> No, that's really good. I I think that's important that you mentioned that 
to take advantage of those opportunities because networking is a huge part of it because i think it's been said that it's not your network it's your network yeah and I, i know that gets misconstrued a lot but it's really all about relationships and the people that you're around i know we talked about mentorship a little bit like well it's a huge part of nala I know that's going to come up in, in, as we talk about Nala seven future episodes, a lot of stuff with mentorship. But I really appreciate you being on the podcast and kind of the collaboration between Carl Paul Leadership and the Nala Sem podcast that's launching very soon. Amani, before we go, I want to make sure people know how to connect with you, whether it's socials, email, whatever. How can people stay connected with you? Um, you can stay connected with me. I had, well, when I have LinkedIn, you can just type in my name. And then um, for my Instagram, I, I, IP underscore FTR underscore PhD. I'm, I'm putting it out there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna happen. <laughs> there you go. Um, and there you go. And I think those are like the main two. I, I'm trying to think. I have an email, but it's long. <laughs> so I don't want to no, you're good. Don't spell you're good. it out. Whatever. So. Yeah, yeah if fine, you reach out so. to me through the other two, then I, I will respond. So it will be okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's how you stay connected. If you're watching, already came across the screen. If you're listening, you can go to the show notes and you'll be able to see it. But yeah, can't say how much, how fun it's been having you on the podcast, getting to learn about you. And for those of you who've been listening, I know you've learned something from her story and how you can truly be incredible. Be sure to rate and review this podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform. We'll see you here next time and be incredible. Incredible. Incredible.